previously on Super Idols RPG. Name's Alan. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you, Alan. I know you risked something by doing that, so I just want to say I see you. Thank you. I am from a town in te- Texas, and so our hair comes comes from the oil of Texas. Oh. We're all Texans. <laughs> you, you said something about like a Texas we don't like not a uh, not a Texas we know. But yeah, you know, there's there's other Texases, sure. Hope you don't have to deal with the drama club. They're always so <sighs> dramatic. dramatic. Karen narrows her eyes. Drama club. You lay a fucking finger on him, I will swear to God, I will murder every single person you know. Oh, don't worry, we're not planning on harming either of you. Just making sure that you won't be a problem for us. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. And Luca. Hello. Uh, Unfortunately, Maria is not here. Maria, unfortunately, will not be joining us for a little while. She has decided to take a step back from doing as many RPG projects for a while, and we wish her all the best, and we, we really hope that we can play with her again someday in the future. They hopefully we will free Anne and Drew from the fog dimension when they do when she does come back. Uh, worst case scenario, if Maria isn't back for a long time, we will still find a story way to make sure they're not trapped there indefinitely. Uh, it was just a cool and dramatic way to explain why Anne isn't in the story for a while. It is now Wednesday. Everyone has had some time to rest and reflect over the last few days. And you've had some wild experiences with older super idols that have given you some some new perspectives on things, I'd say. Uh, so I am going to say that allows all of you to clear all your conditions. Yay! Oh, yay! yay. <laughs> I have so many conditions, yay. <laughs> you've all Me had the too. best night's sleep to just... Whether that's because you genuinely had a good night's sleep or you just want to block out everything that happened. Okay. Goodbye, conditions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, for um, start of session, uh, both groups thankfully finished with a similar amount of team last time. I think you both finished about two or three team points each. So I'm going to say we are starting off with three team, and I get to add another point of team for start of session. So you are very well stocked with four whole team points between you. Wow. Mm-hmm. Let's hope we don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, it's Wednesday. You're back at school again. Um, Angie, you did get in a bit of trouble with school yesterday because you beat up a bunch of teenage girls from another school. Um, but they all, they did let you off with a warning because no one was seriously hurt. Okay. Uh, the school field was also not seriously damaged during your big showdown because the bulk of that damage happened inside shielding for Sagittarius stage. So you don't have to worry about <laughs> property damage charges at all. Okay. <laughs> so. As you all arrive at school on Wednesday morning, I ask the all-important RPG question. What do you do? I think Jaden is probably in the library trying to catch up on homework. Doing some, probably some last-minute homework. He probably, he was meant to do it yesterday, but after everything that happened, he just wasn't in the right headspace. So trying to get it done as quickly as possible now. Well, cool. And how about, how about anyone else? I think Alan has been uh, compulsively checking that uh, idogram video and looking at the comments. Oh yeah, the one from from Monday. <laughs> yeah, the one that Papaya recorded. So just making sure that she destroyed the footage she said she would destroy. Yes, and I think I failed the the time for my solo move. Oh yes, yes, of course. <laughs> also, a little googling about uh, Crimson Signal. Mmm. Yes. We've heard their name pop up a couple of times now. So how how far into your Googling do you think you get? Like, are you just doing a cursory basic search or are you trying to dig deeper? I think it's probably kind of a basic uh, young adult movie kind of Googling. 
like you know when there's some search engine nobody's using and like <laughs> weird keywords like uh, crimson uh, signal shady crimson signal technology tech <laughs> things like that yeah and you come up with some fairly basic search results that as was sort of said in the pitch that you heard they're a fairly up and coming technology company but they seem to be very well funded like they they seem to be able to afford these big marketing blitz campaigns you might have even realized oh i've i've seen like these billboards around town starting to pop up for their stuff uh and they do just seem to be like a music tech company like they specialize in equipment for stage performances like amps and microphones speakers stage stuff all of that stuff and also the stages themselves they do indeed sell that wondrous size changing pocket stage that you saw Sagittaria use and that is very key in a lot of their marketing campaigns they're very proud of this groundbreaking technology cool uh, but otherwise you don't find too much that seems out of the ordinary like the the products seem fine like nobody seems to have a big issue with them the only really negative stuff you can find is the the usual general like anti corporate stuff okay well we'll have to look into it deeper mm. Uh, and how about uh, Angie or Valerie? Uh, I think Valerie has been watching idol like advice and her super idol, you know, how to videos. I think specifically a while ago, Angie mentioned watching Starry Night Skies videos. And so now Valerie is going through those videos and, and seeing what advice that has, what, what she can glean. Nice. Yeah, no, that would make a lot of sense for sure. Um, <laughs> and you certainly find. A lot of really interesting advice, especially mostly with regards to stagecraft, because that's what they're known for, um, especially with the creation of these elaborate light shows. But they do have a lot of general, like, super idle advice as well. Like, what is it? Those high school instructional videos. In fact, they're even created specifically in the parody style of those videos, like what to do when your body is changing, that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, what to do when you can suddenly light someone's hair on fire. <laughs> they do these sort of like tongue-in-cheek videos about the topic, but they're still, like, they have helpful information about them. Like, uh, mostly it's just being mindful while you use your powers, or, like, uh, trying to monitor, like, how your body feels, and trying not to do things in the heat of uh, an emotional moment, if possible. I don't think Valerie needs advice on that, necessarily, but... <laughs> couldn't hurt yeah and if you do manage to hurt someone like how to like approach them and either like apologize or make amends <laughs> or like do something useful with your powers to do <laughs> to counteract whatever damage you might have caused or something like that yeah that i can i can just imagine the the youtube or the, sorry the idle tube watch history how to use your new powers how to avoid hurting people with your powers how to apologize to people for hurting them with your powers. How to avoid a lawsuit for having hurt someone <laughs> with your powers. Um, and how about Angie? Um, I would say Angie is has made good use of uh, all of her new stationery and the spreadsheets and stuff and etc. And uh, she has a new motivation for practice. But outside of that... I think she still thinks that someone from school saw her totally wipe out on stage on the weekend. So she's a little tense looking over her shoulder to see if anybody approaches her about it. But strangely, nobody does. And she's at the point where she's starting to feel like she can relax a little mm -hmm. bit. So she's going through the motions these next few days of just hanging out with her, her clique of preps. Yeah, so you've definitely spoken with people like like Sophia for sure has been like ecstatic to talk with you about what happened on Saturday. In, in fact, when people do approach you, it's more for what happened on Saturday and not so much for what happened on the Mon the Labor Day Monday because the the former was more like spectacularly like incendiary, like all the, the destruction that happened. What happened at the mall was like there was a lot of ice. <laughs> Which is a little less exciting to teenagers, I feel like. Yeah, so I feel like one thing I know for sure is that Angie is unapologetic about beating up the other teenagers from the rival group. 
<laughs> like, I think she's more worried about her team and being a leader and what her team thinks of her than the um, things. So she's just telling the story about how she owned all of them. <laughs> like, after they heavily damaged her team so she's like oh yeah they got what they deserved as far as i'm concerned yeah you've gotten a lot of a lot of like unbidden high fives over the last couple of days from people who have just seen that <laughs> video and also hate <laughs> for MacArthur, and they're like yeah you stuck it to him good job yeah fuck those snobs etc <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you have gotten a, a few mixed reactions as well because some people like are looking at you now a little differently than they did before like they they see like how much power you actually have and that makes them a little bit uncertain about how to interact with you or a little bit more nervous uh, but some people are really into it yeah yeah a little wary uh so yeah so you've all been kind of taking to yourselves throughout the day and keeping to yourselves for a while um, is there at any point, do you think any of you would run across each other during the school day? Or do you think that you would wait until the meeting later? I think Jaden would probably look for the others. At the very least, the ones that hadn't been on our adventure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to at least fill them in on what happened and just check check in on everyone. Because I don't think we've actually, I don't think we've actually met up since. Yeah, no, you've only met up with the people you had your individual adventures with. Yeah. You haven't been a whole group for a while. Yeah, I think I look for I look for everyone, but just specifically, yeah, specifically the ones that we, I, I haven't I didn't see yesterday. Sure, I think you could definitely <laughs> find Angie easy enough because she seems to be attracting like a small crowd wherever she goes. You might have a little more trouble finding Queen Bee because <laughs> you don't know what her true identity is. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But Alan is probably hovering in the area. <laughs> Actually, I might even use my. I think I, I even have a mover for that. Ooh, sure. I have Love moves. Mild mannered. I can use my civilian identity to deceive, trick, or slip past someone. Ooh. Just to be around uh, when uh, they're talking. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I like this this scene of like maybe Jaden runs across Angie and Anne or and Alan is in the area and listening in. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> okay. try and roll it. Sure. So you would be rolling mundane with that. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So I oh, definitely no. So you got a six on that. <laughs> okay, and that means So it says on a miss, one of your civilian obligations rears its ugly head. Hmm. Um so, oh, no. so I'm gonna I'm gonna delay pulling the trigger on that one for a sec, because I wanna see the, the interaction between okay. um Jaden and Angie first. <laughs> That's an uh, actually, does that mean I notice Alan? Continue to talk as if you don't notice Alan at first. I will find a way to to make them notice you. Okay. <laughs> so I think Jaden's probably on like the other side of the corridor and sees Andy on the other end of it and just at the most obnoxious time just starts calling her name out <laughs> as he's approaching. <laughs> so like, Angie, Angie, Angie. And he just, <laughs> just keeps repeating it until he arrives. <sighs> I haven't seen you in like I don't have any days. Days. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hi, Jaden. How's it going? And at this point, I feel like some of her friends are just kind of walking away without her. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it's one of those, you know, I don't know, it's like they're extras in a movie scene where she stops <laughs> to talk. Yeah. And just keep going. I think some of them are already starting to walk away. You were kind of like on the tail end of a conversation. Sophia is here, though, um, and she is too interested <laughs> in the whole idol thing to walk away, I think. Oh my god, is this one of your friends from the idol club? Oh my god, it's such a pleasure to meet you! <laughs> and she starts shaking your hand oh, vigorously. Hi. Oh, um, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Jaden. Yeah, um, what, what's your name? My name's Sophia, uh, and I, I love idols. I, I, I my, my favorites are, are the Bomb Bomb Brothers, um, and Ash and Fire, and, and, and Sorry Nice Wait. Guy, um, yeah. Wait, do you say the, the Bomb Bomb Brothers? Yeah, they're like my super favorite! Do you, do you listen to them too? They're my favorite. Oh my god, oh my god. They're my favorite too. <laughs> and they're like fangirling together. <laughs> <laughs> like I've got like I've got the posters, I've got a jumper, I got the um limited edition um I was gonna say Funko Pop, because I think that's Yeah, I they would have trademark. Funko Pops. <laughs> 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 okay. I got the Bum Bum Bros Funko Pop. Oh my god, oh my god. Did you see their last show? It was ah, oh, they were like near the construction site and they, they blew up that, that whole like scaffolding thing. Oh, and they put it back um, together. Hey, oh. Sophia. 
Uh, yeah. I, I, I think uh, Jaden and I have to talk about uh, super secret idol stuff. Oh, oh, super secret idols. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, I know. Um, yeah, okay, I, yeah. I'll let you do. But uh, get get me. Um, text me or something. Or get yeah, me in, t- yeah, in touch bye. with Jaden. I want to talk about this bye. so much with you. Yeah, and she's yeah. like, yeah, we talk later. she's just nattering, Bye. like, as she, like, walks backward through the hallways continually. <laughs> like, she's doing that, yeah, Angie's doing that thing where she's just, like, nodding and smiling and just waving to try and get her to just <laughs> keep going. <laughs> She like yeah yeah totally totally bye bye and over and over she rounds a corner and then like a second later she peek- she pokes her head out again and yells text me again before she leaves finally <laughs> <laughs> she's really cool yeah she's um enthusiastic but yes um i don't know if the i don't think it's all secret super idol stuff um but a lot happened yesterday. We went um went to check out the um stormlight, and um, did you know there's other dimensions? There's another Texas. Did you know that? There's another oh. Texas. Apparently, apparently, yeah. I I don't re- don't really understand. And a, I mean, something about Texan oil is apparently. I still don't know if this is true, but apparently it's really good for your hair. <laughs> I will explain. I think we probably should meet up with the rest and hopefully explain to everyone because. I'll be honest, I'm still very confused about what happened yesterday, so I kind of want to run it by all of you. Okay, sure. Um, I was planning on getting us together anyway, so I will text everyone, and then uh, we'll go from we'll go from there. See if we can um, meet today, hopefully, because the the performance is coming up soon, and uh, we've had a small hiccup, but uh, we're gonna get above it, and uh, we've Actually, got a show to prepare for. I did actually want to ask about that. Uh, are you okay? I am now. Thank you. I would like to assess oh. and see if that's true. <laughs> I don't know if that's. You could pierce the mask if you wanted to. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to, re- if you want to roll pierce the mask, go ahead. Yeah, he's gonna give you know, just a quizzical look. You got a nice good boost to mundane before this, so <laughs> brings you all the way up yeah, to zero. Yeah, now mundane zero. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hey, you got an eight. Oh, okay. uh, so you get to ask one from the Pierce the Mask question list. I wonder if these really... Hmm. Well, we could interpret what are you really planning as what are you really thinking. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll do that. What are you really thinking? Um, Angie's really thinking that all things considered, she's doing okay. She's m- more motivated than she was before. Yeah, that's mostly it. So she is actually, yeah, she actually is doing okay. And it's not a lie. In that case, Jaden just gives her just a huge smile. And says, yeah, okay. Let's meet up with the rest. And I'll tell you, yeah, I'll tell you about the other Texas thing. That wasn't random, I promise. Um, I mean, I know that North America is a big continent and you've only been here a few days, but there's just one Texas. Um, but uh, I don't know, maybe you went to Alberta? <laughs> <laughs> the Albertan GM is dying over here. <laughs> um, oh, man, that's great. And before you move on with your conversation, by the way, uh, let's let's cut back quickly over to Alan, who has been around a corner this whole time. Uh, Alan, wh- about when do you think you noticed that Jaden and Angie were talking? I think maybe, or well, I think uh, I noticed the. Uh, the excitement between uh, Jaden and Sophia, and try to get in that direction. Okay, so you've you've kind of just been like sort of around the corner, like trying not to be seen and listen in on the conversation. Um, and as the conversation continues, uh, you suddenly feel a hand on your shoulder, <laughs> and you you turn around, and it's Professor Phillips. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> and he's kind of looking at you, like kind of like concerned and disappointed like alan what are you doing uh nothing i was uh, just catching my breath i don't know because it seems an awful lot like you're eavesdropping on a conversation that you are not a part of i'm sorry professor i didn't mean to i just uh i'm not sure how you don't mean to eavesdrop on someone in such a deliberate manner i just like to 
go in and talk to them, but I don't don't really know what to talk about. So I thought maybe I can listen in, figure out what they're into, and then just. And his his face does soften a bit at that. He knows how difficult it's been for you to make friends over the last year or two. And he says, ah, I, I understand that, but if you want to speak with someone, the best tactic is not to secretly listen in on their conversations and stalk them, but to actually speak with them. And he, he takes you by the shoulder and pulls you out from behind the corner and he waves to get the attention of Angie and Jaden. Um, excuse oh, me. No. I don't mean to interrupt, and he sort of, like, <laughs> gestures to have Alan follow. Oh, hi, sir. Uh, hello. D I don't mean to interrupt, but one of my pupils uh, seems to be interested in having a conversation with you. They are just a little bit too shy to say so. Alan, <laughs> why don't you say what you'd like to say? Why don't you apologize to them for what you've just done as well, by the way? I um, apologize? I am... I, I I'm sorry. I was, I was overhearing, and uh, I'm sorry. And like, I just uh, I, I think it's really cool that you're British. I like your accent. <laughs> oh, thank th thank you. Um. Oh, that's okay. Like you, you're in the Idol Club. Uh, I heard you mentioned that. Yeah, I am. That's cool. Do you? Um. Are you interested? Um. No, no, I, no, I that, that's not for me. Uh, meanwhile, this is happening. Um, Angie's kind of looking at the professor like, you can go now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the professor is a little bit more stubborn than some of the adults you're used to dealing with. So he's, he's just kind of standing firmly planted like the trees that he loves so much. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and he's nodding as Alan do at makes their apology and, uh, and is like, yes, yes, this is how you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> and Jaden extends a hand like, I'm Jaden, by the way. Uh, hi, hi, I'm, I'm Alan. I, I think we have a class together. Oh, wait, yeah, we do. I'm so sorry. I completely, I completely forgot. Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's cool. I'm like, I, I sit in the back. And, but uh, it's nice to meet you. Nice to. It's nice meeting you too. If you want to talk anytime, you can just come up to us. Thank you. You're welcome. Alan just looks at Angie, just begging for a little help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Of course. Anytime. Anytime. You can even come and watch us practice one time. Oh, that, that, that'd be cool. Some, someday, maybe when I'm, I'm not busy, I would love to, but... Uh, I, Yes, unfortunately, it seems Alan is quite busy much of the time. Uh, not that I'm helping much, and I do tend to keep my club members very, very occupied. And he, uh, Professor Phillips chuckles to himself. Oh, you're part of the nature club? Oh, yes. We're trying to, you know, do our part. Yes, and... Oh, that's such a good idea. Yes, and of course we welcome volunteering and help from anybody, not just our club members. We do have a neighborhood cleanup coming up. Uh, sometime within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so if anybody feels up to just the exciting task of picking up litter around the neighborhood, give us a ring. Sure. Nothing makes me more excited than picking up litter. And did you say you were members of the Idol Club, by the way? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he it, it actually, he's just like processing this in his head right now and realizing the implications of that. And suddenly his face looks a little more sour, like, Oh, yes. I heard about the incident on Saturday. I hope you realize that the school will not tolerate that kind of thing on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, we're really sorry, sir. I, I understand that mistakes are made, especially early in the year. But just be aware that I will be on top of you if this continues. Come on, Professor. I, I I'm certain they didn't mean it. And oh, it's quite clear they didn't mean it. They it seemed like they meant to do very little, uh, and had very little control over the situation, which is what concerns me. If they are working to increase that control, then all the better. Oops, that was a water bottle. <laughs> 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 then. All the better. I can kind of imagine, like, the, <laughs> the professor dropping it. Yeah, the 
he just happens to like he's waving this water bottle around the whole time and drops it on the floor as he makes like some kind of flourish in this like scolding that he's giving. Yeah. And it kind of takes the wind out of whatever he's saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we were trying our best to be careful, but we were provoked. That's all I'm saying. That's true. I'm, I'm not so much of a fan of the other school as anybody. But we're practicing hard so that we do better next time. Uh, yeah. And we're more careful. Dave is like do. nodding very enthusiastically. Yes, yeah, so see that you do. And at that point, he does determine that he's, he's said his piece here and ends up <laughs> walking away from a lot of you. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll see you later, Professor. Uh, he waves over his shoulder. I, I'm sorry about that. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit old-fashioned. No, it's fine. Um, Angie waits for him to turn the corner, and then she just does this thing where she slumps and rolls her eyes, and she's like, Ugh, thank God he's gone. What? I thought he was quite nice. Well, he obviously doesn't know anything about idols. I mean, yeah. Sophia does though. She's really cool. Why don't you bring her to a practice a practice at some point? Alan, oh, are we gonna we're probably gonna practice today, right, Angie? Um, yes, I'm gonna uh text everyone and uh we will be practicing after school today, hopefully, if everyone can make it. Alan, are you free? Oh uh, what time is that? Uh, it'll be at uh four o'clock after school. Oh, oh damn. Darn, I'm so sorry. I'll, I've got a thing. I... Yeah, yeah, the part-time job, right? Yes, I need to d deliver some supplies to a, an orthodontist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very important. Um, can't can't miss that. I'm thinking of getting a part-time job myself. You know, you know. It's good. It's uh, I like it. It's uh, good cardio. Okay, uh -huh. I'll th I'll think about it. Well, maybe. Maybe another time. Oh, I, I'd love to. Just, uh, you know, some, let me know. I mean, next time we will run into each other or if you, if you want my phone number or... Oh, yeah, sure. Let's uh, change... Um, I'll ch exchange contact information since um, I organize the the events. So we should just, you and me, change contact information. And uh, I'll let you know... Yeah, and I'll yeah, I like to think that like move in over the next the to Alan, <laughs> try not to suspiciously. Yeah, I like to think that like in the first like me meeting where y'all exchange contact info the first time around, uh, Queen Bee would have yeah. only given like a disc idol username and not like a phone number. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, which would also explain why um, Valerie and Jaden and Anne couldn't get a hold of you before. I'm so sorry, uh, Jaden doesn't know that. Alan is going to be. So he's just going. Yeah. <laughs> Dramatic irony. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, just totally changing, exchanging some phone numbers here. Uh, Angie says out loud for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And double checking the number. It looks, yeah, that's uh, that's a hundred percent my phone number. So uh, we have exchanged our phone numbers. Great, and uh, that, that is good. Yep, our manager will be overjoyed. She has some help uh, once in a while. Why are you guys talking out loud like that? <laughs> I'd say you, they they don't do that in England. When you exchange contact, you. Spell it out and make sure you don't get the wrong number. Um, I, I guess we don't. Um, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mean anything, but I guess it's just a different thing we don't really do in the UK. Um, yeah, yeah, it, we totally do that all all the time here in Cadence. Yes, it's a regional thing. Yeah, yeah. Caden is just so he just he's so confused. <laughs> And so you all kind of bring this this conversation to an awkward close, I think. <laughs> yeah, he's like, um, Angie, I think we probably should head out to see if we can meet the rest. Um, Alan, it was great meeting you. I like my pleasure. So uh, have, a, have a good practice. Enjoy. Oh, wait, wait. Before you go, have you ever heard of a second Texas? I'm telling you, it's Alberta. Like a 
secession thing or I don't know. I I'm I'm still not entirely sure. I, you know, never, you know, uh, never mind. I'm sorry. It was that was a weird thing for me to say. I'm sorry. Um, don't worry. Second Texas. Put that on your list to Google later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's nice meeting you for the first time. See you later. It's a pleasure. See see you around whenever. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll help out with the the cleanup thing. Oh, that'd be great. Good There's PR. Always so much and now everybody yeah. is just kind of awkwardly walking backwards away from each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out that I legitimately, because I haven't, I haven't listened to the recording, I legitimately didn't know that Andy knew. <laughs> so I was like, wait, what's going on? So I was literally <laughs> figuring it out during that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> no meta gaming allowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So you, you've, you've yeah, all finished this so. up, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think uh, Angie just promises that uh, she'll send an email to everyone to meet up in the practice room after school. And she writes mandatory in all caps. <laughs> so that way, you know, they'll all show up. <laughs> That's how yeah. it works. And of course, she sends it on like that kind of, you know, that old school like email backing where they're like, oh, it's going to be all flowers and stuff. Like she has that kind of layout in the email where, like, the font is pink and there's, like, flowers around the border. Because <laughs> <laughs> even the emails have to be stationary in some way. <laughs> Perfect. All right, yeah, so you, you send off your message. Uh, everybody knows when and where to meet. Um, and I think we can go through the rest of the school day relatively without incident. <laughs> um, sorry to sort of <laughs> stonewall you out of that whole scene there, um, Valerie. <laughs> No, it's fine. I, I I imagine it gave you more time to watch more videos. <laughs> you've you've managed to look up some some extra some extra special tips about what to do when your powers interact badly with someone else's powers. Mm -hmm. All right, so everybody knows where to meet and ends up in the club room around four p.m. Of course, you are missing a couple of people. It seems like Karen is still at home recovering, so you do not have Karen here, unfortunately. But she is available via text or, like, FaceTime or whatever if you need her. <laughs> and, of course, um, Anne doesn't seem to show up for whatever reason. You haven't heard from Anne all day. It's kind of weird. Like, she's not easy to miss. Would we have asked a teacher or something if she was here today or... Uh, yeah, you can if you want to before the meeting. Well, I just figured it would be more like a maybe a retcon kind of thing where we did ask. Oh, like earlier during the day, you mean? Or just in general, like not some, I guess not something to role play out, but it's like, would we have asked or would there have been any notice that Anne was away sick or anything like that? Um, I don't think so, actually, um, because her parents are not the greatest at like letting the school know about stuff. So as far as the school is concerned, okay. she has an unexcused absence. Okay. And no one knows where she is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just saw Anne yesterday. Has anybody heard? Or are we at practice again? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can say that everybody's arrived now at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Has anybody heard from Anne? No. Uh, I saw her yesterday after we looked at the venue. We we split up, and I haven't seen her today. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Maybe she's just not feeling well. Yeah. Maybe. Um. Let's just. That's just weird. I'm sure she'll contact us eventually when she's feeling better. You guys checked out the venue? Yes, we were able to go and we got some pictures and videos uh, around the, the smaller stage and also met some professional idols that was, um, well, here, like, looks looks at Jaden like, that was... Jaden just shrugs like, told him about the second Texas. I still don't really understand. Mean Alberta. Mm. Is it Alberta? Is that I don't I don't think that's what they meant, but Second Texas. They they said that they came from a a different Texas where everybody has hair that moves on its own, and then some government agents showed up to arrest them, and then they decided to help each other instead and 
Then there was a bus made of hair. What? What? And then they drove away. <laughs> In a bus yeah. made of hair? Yes. Yeah. Um, I I don't think they have those in Alberta. I hope not. Not that I remember, but you never know with Alberta. <laughs> those those, El- those Albertans. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> and they're, yeah. <laughs> they're a secret race of hair-powered people. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's, a, it's all part of the Calgary Stampede. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The horses are actually just hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, there's this one one person was the main one. I guess um, they were like the leader. They went by Hercules. Hercule Hercules. Yeah, yeah. The group was called the the Extensions. <laughs> the Extensions, like the, hair the, extensions. Yeah, the X Tensions. It was like X and then Tensions. Right? Yes, it was. I mean, it, it was is an a- experience. I think I've heard that name. Oh, really? Like they they do like hair metal, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Though they weren't they were criminals. Yeah. It was a really weird day yesterday. So you met a hair metal band of hair powered people named the from another Texas. Yes. Who called themselves the Extensions. And their leader's name was Hercules, and they drove away in a bus made of hair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you say it like that. (laughs) (laughs) It was very, very strange, but uh, we did, after all of that, we were able to look at the stage and and get some pictures and video from different angles. That's good. Did you you get the measurements for the stage? Yes. Yes. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Well, other than the weird hair stuff, you definitely saved us a lot of time. Yes, and uh, I have been thinking about what happened on Saturday, and I think that mistakes were made, but clearly, uh, as a group, we we have a ways to go, and we are preparing for a regular gig that will not be against any other idol groups, so we should we should focus on preparing for that rather than what happened during that battle at the moment? Well, I do think that we should talk about it a little bit, but I think I speak for all of us when I say that this is 100% the other band's fault, and uh, I punished them, so there's that thing. But they caught us off guard, and I think we can all agree that that's not going to happen again. But I'm sorry for yelling. Or whatever. And I wanted to apologize to everyone. Uh, I'm I'm sorry Karen is not here, but uh, I lost control and that wasn't cool and I'm going to do better. Suddenly unbidden, you all get a text with a peace sign emoji from Karen on your phones. <laughs> is she... Speak of the devil. How did she... I don't know. Can you hear us, Karen? You don't get anything else in response. Okay. Okay, well, that's good. We we will all do better. I'm I'm sorry about shouting at you. See, by the way, um, I just kind of panicked. Yes, I did uh, too. Like I said, um, mistakes were made, and we should just concentrate on preparing for the the actual gig that is coming up, rather than spontaneous battles against other idol groups that we were not prepared for. I agree, and. I'll try to do better about not accepting challenges that we're not prepared for next time. Okay. But I think we can all agree that they were the worst. They were. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yes. they were they were pretty good on on stage. I have, I have to admit. Read the room, Jaden. So sorry. They're our enemy. <laughs> no, he's right. We should if we if we do. Except challenges in the future, we should be ready for the other team to be coordinated and prepared, but uh, we just have to be better. And we will be. You're right. Which leads me to possibly, maybe we should scope the other competition. Not while we're preparing for the, for the gig, but 
maybe on our own time, maybe we can Google some of the other schools and see what they do so that at least should anything come up, we'll be prepared for them a little bit better, prepared for what to expect. I agree. That's a good idea. Okay, well, and then Angie pulls out her new clipboard, and it is pink and purple, and it has, like, Ooh. silver around the the side of it. Ooh. Is that new? She put on the silver part herself with, like, silver silver tape. Ooh. Yeah. I like the yeah. I like the symbolism of this, considering. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Jaden Jaden looks at it like very impressed like oh is that is that new wait did you do that yourself i did this i did this part myself and yes it is new i got it on sale at swansong stationery the best place in the world and uh i also got and she brings out like all of the new gel pens that she bought (laughs) (laughs) and they've all got like color-coded like little erasers that she got later on it, like pom-poms and erasers that she got from the dollar store later on. But she doesn't say that she got it from the dollar store. Just an array of sparkle sound effects right here. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay. So we need to come up first and we need to come up with a training schedule. And then we need to crush the other school clubs so that we have unlimited access to the auditorium for the next two weeks. Crush? What do, what do you um? What does that mean? Metaphorically. Yes, oh. not not physically. No. Okay. We need the stage, and we'll have to deal with the drama club at some point to possibly get access to it. I can't. Can we just ask? I guess. Uh, well, we can put in the request, but we may need to be prepared for them to contest it. Uh, we we might be forced to negotiate. We can do that. Yeah, it's basically to put in a request like that. You would just go down to the office and speak with uh, with Mr. Pollock, who would be in charge of organizing scheduling for various room bookings. <laughs> and if there is already someone who's on the schedule for it, then yes, you would have to petition to show why you deserve the space at certain times and why it's not as important for the other group to have that space. I mean, there's no timeline at present, right? We can. Why don't we just give in a request now? Good idea. Let's go. All right. So you're headed down to the front office. Yes, in a, of course, strut scene with music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the the like walking down the hall, <laughs> power walk. <music>. Yeah. <laughs> the like what is? I'm thinking like and- the the cherry bomb walk sequence from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and I think what adds to the funny part of the scene is that because it's after school, the halls are empty, so it's yeah. not like anybody can see us doing this. Yeah. <laughs> like, occasionally you'll see, like, some, like, lost student wandering around in the background, but that's about it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Alright, so you are you arrive at the front office, you see Mr. Pollock is there, as you expect, and you see... He is, in fact, talking to someone. In fact, Valerie, you know who he's talking to. This is Yasmin Brennan, one of the only other goth girls at Fort McNally, and a member of the (gasps) drama club. Of course. (laughs) So yeah, she's fairly tall. She's a black girl, long hair, like kind of like very curly kind of hair that goes down in like a ponytail and she's got these amazing kind of like lace top and ensemble going on kind of like a gothic lolita almost with a little cape on her shoulders and she is talking to mr pollock and talking very very sweetly honestly like you've never had a beef with yasmin other than the fact that like the goth thing is your thing (laughs) It, it was probably her thing longer than it was mine but I definitely think that it's my thing now <laughs> and you can probably gather why she might be here uh oh I put on the teacher's pet charm and I just kind of barge in and just be like oh hi Mr. Pollock oh hey hey, Angie how's it going uh, Mr. Pollock gives you like uh, the finger guns of greeting I also give finger guns back and I'm like, I'm doing great. We need the auditorium for the next two weeks. And 
that that definitely gets you like a a look of consternation from Yasmin, who's like, um, I sorry to burst your bubble, but we are just in the process of negotiating that schedule right now. The drama club is just starting to get their schedules together. I guess can we work something out? Oh, I'm I'm sure we can work something out, but you know the. Idol Club, of course, is uh, much, much more active than it was previous year, so we may have to, you know. Yeah, like I, have, I wasn't even worried space. about that. I, I knew how little the last Idol Club used the room. I wasn't even, well, I guess I wasn't even thinking. And I think she doesn't mean that as an insult, but it kind of comes across as mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. Yeah, so as, as you can imagine, we need a, a lot of time to get used to the space, you know, I'm, I'm sure the, the drama club is already quite familiar with the auditorium stage. Well, we do have a lot of new students this year ourselves who aren't quite familiar with the space yet, and we need to show them a bunch of, like, how all the how all the tech areas work and, like, all the little, like, places around that we need to store things and put together sets and whatnot. It's it's a lot of involved work. I'm, I don't know if you've ever been involved in drama, but it can be very dramatic. Oh, I understand that, but uh, is that really that time sensitive? Right now, the Idol Club will needs to prepare for a public exhibition in two weeks. Yeah, we're gonna be in the stormlight. Uh, and Yasmin puts a, a hand on her on her hip. The Drama Club is presenting second year monologues for the start of year. We have something coming up too. We we also need the space. Like, and she kind of gestures with a hand, like, come on, like, work with me here. Monologue? Or first group dancing and singing and music? Like, you know. Are you disparaging the ancient art of the dramatic monologue? And she, she starts to look fairly, like, gesturing a- again with, like, these big dramatic gestures. <laughs> I think Jaden pops out like, no, no, we're not doing that. Just that we think, I think what we're trying to say is, the idol, what we need to do is just more important. Not, <laughs> not <laughs> Oh, that sets her off. Like, like, um... More important? <laughs> do you know how long the drama club has been no, at this school? I mean, I'm sorry. This is very important to me. It's my last year. This is the most important year of my drama club career. This has to be perfect. Um, Yasmin? Yes? What? Um, I agree. I think that we should work something out. And I think we can help each other. Oh, and what could you offer? I'm pretty sure the Idol Club hasn't had much to offer in the last few years. What? I, you know what? I'll, I'll be I'll be open. I'll, you're you are all new members. It looks like. What what do you have to offer? Do you think? Uh, well, I was thinking that um, on days where you're teaching kids the tech area, maybe we can use the stage to rehearse, and the tech kids can practice their lights and stuff on us. And then maybe vice versa, because we're going to need to learn how to use tech for our shows. And I just think Mm. we can teach each other. Mm. And she is she's considering this idea. She's like, I don't know. There was it was a few years back now, but there was the incident. And she she shudders a little bit (laughs) between. And I don't think you know exactly what happened, but there there is like a little like rumor around an incident between the drama club and the idol club that happened a few years back that people speak of in hushed tones. Well, I can't speak about the incident, but as you can see, we're an entirely new team. So maybe we can also have an entirely new fresh start. What we really need is some rehearsal time that we can utilize um, to know what it feels like to be on the stage so that we can perform for our gig. And I think most of our rehearsal time could arguably be done off of the stage just like yours. It's only when you're doing the last dress rehearsal and stuff that you really need to know what the stage feels like. Wouldn't you agree? And at this, it sounds like you're building into actually a pretty good provoke someone because you're making a very good argument um, that Yasmin is somewhat amenable to, just a little slightly hesitant. So okay. I'm going to have you roll plus superior on that. Okay, I have minus one superior. So. <laughs> but you also have 14 <laughs> points. 
Oh yeah, fourteen points. I thought you said fourteen. Oh yeah, and I was like fourteen. Oh yeah, no, you've right yeah, yeah. you have four <laughs> space team points. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm gonna try and roll. I and mean, no situational bonuses or anything like that, right? Actually, you know what? I am gonna grant you a plus one because you're you're making a pretty good level-headed argument right now. Okay. I know that's not in the rules of best, but whatever. GM rules. <laughs> oh no. Um you so you got a six, but again, you do have four team points. <laughs> Would anybody like to add to this and help Angie out? Oh yes. Alright, so uh Queen Bee, how are you helping uh Angie get this point across to Yasmin and convince her? We are an all new lineup and we want to start uh, a new era. I mean, haven't you ever considered musicals? We could in time even do something together. So on a seven to nine, I get to pick a one option from the list of they stumble and you take plus one forward, they err and you gain a critical opportunity, or they overreact and gain influence over them. And I I think I'm going to say that since Yasmin already kind of overreacted a little bit earlier, I'm going to say that was that was it. And as you're like bringing her down from that overreaction and making all these like logical points, I'm going to say Angie and Queen Bee can both gain influence over Yasmin. Cool. So Yasmin is nodding along and she's like, you know what? I'm a, I'm a reasonable person. And she makes a little like flick off the, the cape to like <laughs> make a little like fluffle <laughs> as she speaks. And she says, I'm a reasonable person. You're right. You are all new idols. You're new members. You've certainly already made a bit of a splash more so than the previous club that, well, to be honest, that looked a little concerning in and of itself, but it does show that you've got a little bit more gumption. And I kind of find that interesting. You know what? Let's do it. Sure. And she she extends a lacy gloved hand for you to shake. Angie reaches out her hand and shakes her hand. <laughs> and Mr. Pollock's just kind of been like watching the whole time. And now he's like smiling like, excellent. So <laughs> let's schedule this out, shall we? And he starts to work with you to work out the exact scheduling of exactly when both clubs are going to be in the auditorium. Yeah, so I guess um, first we need to know when the drama club is having their performance. Oh, (laughs) I need to decide that, don't I? It's probably going to be on an upcoming school night, because I guess from my previous drama experience in high school, everything always seemed to happen on a school night in terms of performances. Okay. So probably, I'm going to say the Friday before your gig. Okay, so really close. Yeah. So I think we would... Or Angie would try to negotiate for every second night, and then um, maybe the first week, both teams are there getting a feel for the stage and the tech area. The whole time during this, Jane is like profusely apologizing for accidentally saying that our oh, idol work is more important. Like, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean it like that. It just came across, or like, I'm very. Very it's, sorry. I'm sure your drama work is just equally as important. It's, Maybe it's even fine. more important. I, it is I'm actually really, very really good. Been into it, it, drama recently. It, 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 and you're both kind of like just talking over each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have, you you should come see like what my I do a great uh, Lady Macbeth speech. I, I don't know who that is. <laughs> but yeah, she seems a little more endeared to you now that you've profusely apologized <laughs> and shown the like your trademark likability. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, yeah, she's definitely calmed down by this point. And she's a little more amenable to the the lot of you. Except maybe she's still, like, side-eyeing Valerie a little bit, because you're still kind of like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, Valerie's just watching this negotiation with her arms crossed. <laughs> she makes, like, a side comment at, at one point, being like, you know, you would look really, really nice if you, like, got, like, a nice parasol and, like, one of those pirate skirts, like a black pirate skirt. I think that would suit you very well. Valerie just, but like, narrows her eyes but doesn't respond. <laughs> yeah, like I think she, I think she she means well with that comment, but she seems to have a habit of mm-hmm. like accidentally insulting people. <laughs> it's just like the tone of voice she's using just comes off really yeah. <laughs> passive aggressive for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> your words sound like they meant to make me feel good, but your tone, I, I just can't <laughs> tell. <laughs> okay, so I'll make a color coded calendar that we'll put on the wall in the auditorium and uh then we'll go from there yeah no that sounds that sounds good to me i think we have i think we have a deal i suppose what should i what should i call the the lot of you i we can't just keep calling you the fort mcnally idol club that's a mouthful oh good 
question. Um, name is still a work in progress, so it will have to be the FMIC for now. <laughs> Um, but we'll get back to you with, with the name because uh, we've only had a few practices and we haven't had a chance to discuss that. Yeah, well, you, you'll you definitely want one soon. I know from past production experiences that that sort of name would not fit very well on a playbill or production banner. It yeah, just doesn't have very much right. oomph and it's busy. You're right. Um, you're absolutely right. And we didn't even think of that. See, we're already sharing knowledge. This is working out so great. So uh, we're going to go and practice. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pollock and Jasmine, and uh, we'll get going. No problem. He gives you like a little like <laughs> two finger salute kind of thing off the top of his head. <laughs> I just love that the teachers are kind of... <laughs> They're dorks. They're all, They're dorks. all dorks. Yeah. <laughs> Largely because the GM is a dork, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And we love them all because of it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you so. all give your, your ending pleasantries and Yasmin gives you all a little like curtsy as she leaves and um opens a, a lacy parasol indoors as she leaves and gives it a twirl. <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that wasn't so bad. I still feel really guilty. Uh, she seemed fine, though. I think she understood that it was just a misunderstanding. I think you're fine, Jaden. Yeah, don't worry. Yes, we'll be fine. We'll get the practice that we need. And it seems like they're not... The, that Yasmin and presumably the rest of the, the drama club will be amenable. So that went well. Yeah, I think it worked in our favor that not a single one of us has been in the Idol Club before, so... <laughs> yeah, what is that about the incident? I've heard of, I've heard about it, but nothing about it. I guess would Valerie and I know about that, Aaron? Again, it's it was between the Drama Club and the Idol Club, so anyone outside of those clubs really only knows that something went down that nobody wants to talk about. <laughs> we'll have to ask Karen. Karen has been here a long time. Yeah. And again, un unbidden, you get a text message from Karen that just says, drama club, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Karen, are you listening to us? How's she doing that? Does, does it have a little, like, fist emoji? <laughs> no, but the, the, the dots are, like, there's a space between each one to make it look like a longer pause. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Not the space to let's see. Well, are space you sure to Karen doesn't have any powers? <laughs> I think she does. I, she has to, right? This is too uncanny. Anyway, um, let's go back to the conference room. We have to talk about a name. Yes. I mean, right now we're technically named F Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound great at all. Yeah. I guess we head over. We head back to the conference and start talking about a name because that's a very valid question. <laughs> if if anyone is paying attention, uh. As we walk back to the club, uh, Valerie has taken her phone out and is Googling pirate skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mainly drawing this on my own experience with Gothic Lolita. I love those skirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I love the visual style. All right, so you make it all back to your to your club room. All right, um, <laughs> there's not much else to say about that. You you mm -hmm. you we're here. <laughs> you power walk back in the same formation. <laughs> It's then we notice that there is a whiteboard on the wall. Wow, how how did we not notice that before? Well, it's a conference room, of course. There has to be one. Yeah. At the very <laughs> least, even if they don't use the whiteboard, they might use it as like a projection surface. Yeah, Angie walks up to the whiteboard and she encaps one of the markers, but she also looks at the marker disapprovingly because it's not up to her stationary standards, but shrugs, because it'll do. Yeah, it's one of those markers that's, like, half dry. Like, it'll still make a mark, but, it, like, everything feels, like, too light for your liking. Yeah, uh, and she has to use, like, the green one that nobody uses because that one's fine. <laughs> yeah, because for some reason no one ever uses that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she writes F-M-I-C name ideas and, like, a squiggly line under it and then puts a cap on the marker. So, let's brainstorm. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it going to be a bit hard to figure out a name for us if we don't really have a sound yet? 
or at least a, a theme, some, something to unify us. Yeah. Angie is writing sound and theme with like little, little asterisks is on the board. <laughs> You're right. What is our sound? I mean, that sample I kind of messed up a bit on, but well, we'll hold it for you guys, but I kind of try to add a bit of everyone's sound into it. I don't know how much you guys like it. Do you have an audio file of it we can listen to? Can I? <laughs> Aaron, can yeah, I? <laughs> you, you would have made like a, a super basic like recording of it while you were composing it. Yeah. yeah, so I'd probably get my phone out and just play it. And yeah, you just see like, it's probably just a video. It's just probably just a very nice tran- tranquil scene on the video because he still used his phone. He didn't record it. He, used it, he video recorded it. Mm-hmm. But over it, he like edited the different layers of um, instruments he thought would be would work. Oh. I kind of spent all night making putting this together, and I was very excited to show you guys. But then um, when I played it, nerves kind of got a bit of me. But how do you like it? That's I think that's good. Yeah, it's like um, it's like we have a fusion sound, hmm. a fusion of styles. She writes fusion under the sound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now Jaden's like just wide eyed when she said fusion. So when you write it down, he's like, he's just nodding like, yeah, we definitely need to use like fusion somewhere. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of fusion, I I was thinking that we could uh, incorporate some uh, uh, classical dance move in, the, in our routine. Yes, I mm. love that. And she writes that down under style, classical dance. <laughs> Yeah, because you had like that amazing ballroom dip that you did in your last smaller group session. So we want to evoke a, a certain emotion when people think of our group. Excitement. Yeah, I want I want people to feel happy when they listen to us. And then she writes that under theme, excited, happiness. Should definitely be flashy, memorable. She's writing these words down. <laughs> Two hours later. So as you're you're sort of talking this out and you're brainstorming more ideas, you're getting more words on the board, you end up, you, everybody like kind of pulls out like a different like app at a certain point, like a th- thesaurus or like a related words or synonyms.org or yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> Somebody pulls out rhyme zone for some reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've I've definitely like, I've made a separate color for all the columns now. So they're all a separate color of marker. <laughs> Sway, disco, um, frolic, prance. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's really fit. Oh, uh, <laughs> so like fusion, I guess another word for fusion is mix. Mm-hmm. Okay, mix. Hmm. Writing that down. Have something, uh, something for music, melody, um, tune, rhythm. R- rhythm, melody, yeah. tune. Rhythm. I kind of like a rhythm. So she takes an eraser to the board and she wipes the whole thing off. And she writes the words rhythm and mix on the board with question marks. Hmm. Hmm. I think we can like smush it together. Like one word. Like one word. Um, like you can share an M. Okay. Yeah. So she writes R-H-Y-T-H-M-I-X. I feel like it's still missing something you look at the board for a second you're like i like it kind of what is it missing uh, and then you get one more unbidden text <laughs> from karen that, that just says x add another x i guess it's karen i add another x on the board and then i erase the lowercase m and then make it a capital Rhythmics. Rhythmics. That sounds good. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Karen texted again and said, sorry, I butt texted you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I mean, I guess we got saved by butt text. I'm I'm still not convinced that she that, that was a butt text. I don't know if that was a, a butt text. Yeah, um, but we have a name. She texts you an an emoji of a peach. (laughs) (laughs) Oh god, I love Karen so much. How is she she doing this? 
How? How is she doing that? I, I don't know. And Angie is looking around the room, looking, <laughs> seeing if there's microphones or cameras or something. Ah, <laughs> uh, we need a logo. <laughs> I'm really thinking about the merch. I, I want to wear. I want to wear rhythmic merch. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the, I'm thinking of. I was thinking of merch too. <laughs> I think someone will have to try and text uh, Anne and see if she approves of the name. But um, unfortunately, you oh, don't yeah. seem yeah. to get an answer back from her. Hmm. Maybe she's okay. Maybe she's just having a bad day. Oh, and I also, I also text or I also email Cynthia with the name. Oh yes, yeah, because Cynthia hasn't technically left the club either. Okay, we have a name. And I have a dance choreo for you. Oh. Yeah, I I worked it out with my friend. It's still really rough, but uh, maybe we could give it a try. Always up for it. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. All right, so you gather everybody into the, the start of the choreography that you planned out with Kyle, and mm -hmm. you sort of explain sort of some of the steps involved. And as you're about ready to start, you say, All right, from the top, three, two, one. Hey there, everyone. I've got something important to tell you all before the credits, so please stick around for this. It isn't super relevant to today's episode, but I promised myself that I would talk about it the next time Karen was in an episode, and she was technically in this one, so I thought I should bring it up now. Over the past few months, I have been fleshing out some more of my GM plans behind the scenes, including fleshing out some of the show's key NPCs. This includes Karen. At the beginning of the campaign when I started playing her, I designed her look using a Picru character creator. I did this for Diana, I did this for Amberly, I, I did it for, well, basically just those three, but yes. <laughs> I didn't think much about it at first, but after our first session, I thought to myself that while Karen had a lighter skin tone, her long black hair and brown eyes could easily lend themselves to her being from some kind of Asian background, possibly Japanese or mixed Japanese, given her interest in Japanese-style idol and wota culture. She's also partly inspired by characters like Kanata from Love Live and Osaka from Azumanga Daio, both of which are Japanese, so there you go. So after a while, I started thinking of her as mixed race, Caucasian, and Japanese in my head. But I was a little stuck on when to bring that up in game, since I hadn't at the start. And I was even stuck on whether I even should. While I generally don't shy away from including NPCs with marginalizations I don't share, since a diverse world for the players is important to me, Karen is a character I play a lot. It's to the point where she almost feels like one of the PCs at times. And there are a lot of legitimate concerns about white players playing non-white PCs. On the one hand, a white player can never play a POC as well as a POC player can. And there are concerns about cultural appropriation and prominent white players taking away visibility from POC players. There's lots of, lots of things that can go wrong there. On the other hand, it's also not great to just keep all of one's major characters white, especially in a story like Super Idols where, again, diversity is important. So I never was sure if I wanted to confirm Karen's race one way or another, since I wasn't sure what the right thing to do there would be. But when it came time to flesh Karen out more in my notes, I realized I had to make a choice on that front one way or another. And as I wrote, I ended up deciding that it had been kind of shitty of me to not make a choice and be vocal about it sooner. There are some shows that deliberately don't pin down races for the characters so that it's easier for listeners to imagine them any way they want, and those shows have their value, but personally I feel like it's important to actively include characters of specific identities and races, because not saying anything on that front can result in listeners assuming a white, straight, and or cis default for all or most characters. And it's not really representation if an audience can assume that, is it? So before I finalized anything with Karen, I sought help from friend of the show Ayumi Shinozaki, also known as Magical Girl Ayu from the podcast Sparkle Side Chats, which you should definitely all listen to by the way if you're a fan of Magical Girl stories. She let me know that 
yes, the fact that she didn't know that Karen was Japanese by this point in the show was surprising and disappointing for her to hear, and that it should have been brought up from the start. And from there, she helped me with sensitivity reading on Karen's backstory, and we got it to a point that we're both quite happy with. So yeah, I, I do want to acknowledge that I am never going to play a mixed race character as well as someone who is actually of that background, but at this point with Karen, I feel like I would be betraying her if after all this I went back and said, oh yeah, no, she's just been 100% white all, all this time. So, yes, that is all to say, I want to confirm that yes, Karen is mixed race, Japanese and Caucasian, and even more than that, in writing her backstory, I also felt like she was asexual, so that's another thing I'd like to confirm about her as well. And yeah, me saying this here is all well and good, but I also don't want this to be like a Turf K. Rowling style footnote representation where these sorts of facts are only stated outside the story and way, way after the fact, way after they should have been. So rest assured that both of these things will get brought up in future episodes in both big and small ways. And also, I am going to go back and make changes to episode one that include these details about Karen from the start. It's still not as good as having included those details in the first place, but as they say, better late than never. <clears throat> and uh, on a side note, since I'm going to go back and make some changes to episode one anyway, I am also going to include the detail that Amberly is fat. That is something I did mean to include from the start. You can see in her pickrew on the website that she is fat. But I missed it when I was going over her description at the time, and as a fat person who loves fat rep, I've been kicking myself about that ever since, so I'm going to add that in there as well. And lastly, in order to make sure that there is representation from an actual Japanese player on the show, I am pleased to announce that Ayu will be appearing on the show as a guest in Arc 2. We have some plans to record with her in the next few months, among several other cool guests that we're lining up for our 2021 recording slate, so stay tuned for more details on that in the future. Anyway. Thank you very, very much if you're still listening to this long outro bit, but it was very important to me that I get all this out there. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns about Karen or anything else in the show so far. I am more than willing to listen and make changes as needed. I'm extremely, extremely sorry for not saying anything about Karen's race or orientation sooner, and will be much more upfront about this with any characters in the future. Karen especially, I'm really, really looking forward to letting you all get to know better as the show goes on. Definitely look forward to that, and I'll talk to you all again later! Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was Dane Alexa as Valerie Pierce, T as Evangeline Blake, Draconics as Jaden Lott, Luca as Queen Bee, and Aaron Cerise as the GM. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons, Chris T, Rachel Waffle, Circus, and Sensei1477. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload, or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. You can also support this podcast monthly on Patreon at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise, or through a one-time donation on Ko-fi at ko-fi.com slash Aaron Cerise. Super Idols RPG is a proud member of Be Gay Roll Dice, a network for RPG podcasts made by LGBTQIA plus creators. You can check out all the great independent queer shows on our network at twitter.com slash begayrolldice. Stay tuned for promos from our network partner, Memento Mori, as well as another cool podcast you should check out, The Game is Afoot. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time!
Hi, are you a fan of the Persona video games? What about post-apocalyptic worlds with desperate people drawn together for a common good? How about all the drama and excitement and heartbreak that happens in college? If you like the sound of any of these things, you'll like Memento Mori, a TTRPG podcast based loosely on the Persona universe. We've got some big stories to tell, with plenty of humor thrown in the mix. So come join Nat, Dante, Eli, and House as they balance on the thin line between the mysterious dream world that lurks below their college campus and the real lives they're desperately trying to build. I'll see you there! Okay, so the game is afoot does not have a trailer, but they did provide me with some ad copy to read, which was very nice of them. So, here I go. I want to read it. Sam, Jack, Ark, and Eden didn't really walk in the same social circles before their unexpected trip to Oz. But such a journey binds people together. They thought that was the end of their adventures, but there's a haunted hospital to explore, and a new world pulling them away from home. Will they ever be normal teenagers again? Were they ever normal teenagers in the first place? Listen to four queer folks and one straight lady as they explore what it takes to manage magical adventures and the struggles of high school. You can find The Game is Afoot on Twitter at TGIA Podcast or on their website at thegameisafootpodc.wixsite.com slash mysite. That's thegameisafootpod with a letter C on the end dot wixsite.com slash mysite.